here's a short history of jQuery. For many, jQuery was their first JavaScript library. Back in 2006, when these guys dominated our desktops, jQuery helped to manipulate the document object model, the tree-shaped internal structure of the application. jQuery brought consistency to all browsers. It was really good and really important until newer browsers and JavaScript itself learned to do the same. In 2020, jQuery is mostly mentioned in heated debates about how eminent its death is. And often, its death is predicted to happen at the hand of more advanced technologies that set the new standard for front-end development. Technologies like Angular. The pros and cons of Angular. Understanding the main front-end technology. Bear with us for a moment, because first, we need to talk about the beginning, Angular JS. jQuery is a library, and Angular is a framework. Both libraries and frameworks are just collections of pre-written code. It's like buying bricks instead of making them from mud. But besides that, frameworks also determine, well, the frame, the basic structure of the future application. Libraries need a few extra tools for that. Modern frameworks like Angular or Ember were created by developers in the belief that a good product should be built and function in a particular way. AngularJS was created in 2010 by Google developers Mishko Hevery and Adam Abrams. They called the new framework Angular because it works in an HTML file and HTML has Angular brackets. Six years later, it was completely rewritten. So much so that you couldn't simply update to the new one. You had to rewrite your whole application. This created a reasonable divide between the users. Some couldn't justify the long and costly migration, while others became fans of the improved version. The older one bears the classic naming. The new Angular removed the ending in true minimalistic fashion. Still, AngularJS is supported and even used on some current Google platforms. AngularJS appeared at the same time other classic JavaScript frameworks like Knockout and Backbone were born. How exactly was it special then? Let's talk about the three pillars of AngularJS. Two-way data binding, dependency injection, and directives. Let's tackle these complex phrases one by one. As we said, frameworks basically define what architecture the app will have. The original AngularJS implemented an architecture called Model View Controller, or MVC. It means that an application is separated into three layers. Model, the layer responsible for the core logic of the app, its rules. View, basically its interface. And Controller, the part that accepts user inputs and sends responses back from Model. Two-way data binding here means that both sides, Model and View, are synchronized. Whatever happens in model is displayed on view, and vice versa. This meant that developers didn't need to write code for that exact purpose. Second, dependency injection. Dependencies are relations between different pieces of code. Traditionally, each object in the code has to construct a dependent object. So if you want to change the dependency, you'll have to change the object too. So, instead of attaching dependencies to objects, AngularJS attaches injectors to objects that link them to dependencies stored in a central location. As a result, you can reuse code and mock those dependencies when writing unit tests. Finally, directives. Directives are the most used part of AngularJS, as they are the ones extending classic HTML. They work as markers on a DOM element, telling AngularJS what behavior to attach to that element. Basically, they make it possible for HTML to create dynamic content. So, all of this established AngularJS as the perfect tool for building single-page applications with tons of elements to interact with. It helped engineers solve problems that they had before, and the framework got so popular. But large, single-page applications were doomed to be slow and laggy. AngularJS didn't provide any solution for that, but another technology did. React was produced by Facebook, another industry giant, and became open source in 2013. React skyrocketed because it offered a different way and, more importantly, better way. First, it rolled back to one-way data binding, and second, it used components, aiming to fix the problem with large SPAs. 
Then, the same team released React Native for building mobile apps using the same technology and principles. It was a breath of fresh air for many devs frustrated with the old AngularJS, and React wasn't even a framework. The AngularJS team refused to accept defeat and launched a big update three years later. The expectations for the update were too high, the doubts even higher. Many still argue whether Google exceeded them. The Pros of Angular Angular 2 no longer abided by MVC architecture. It was now component-based, like React. This is when we finally talk about the MVC drawbacks. The whole MVC pattern was borrowed from the backend, since at that time, the front-end applications were getting bigger and we didn't yet know how to structure them. On the server, interactions of view and controller were distinctly separated between the client and server side. On the front end, this separation wasn't as clear, and the controller in Angular was even created by the view. This was breaking the single responsibility principle that says that every class or module should be responsible for just one function of the software. The model failed the rule too. It had to manage both UI and application states. When Facebook released React, it called it the V in MVC, introducing components. Components are independent features of the user interface with their own structure and APIs. They can be copied and reused, easily tested and replaced. Also, one component can be updated without refreshing the whole page. While MVC separated all functions into different levels, components have all those functions on the same level, the view level. So Angular followed the path of becoming component-based. Along with the architecture change, the future Angular versions offered four types of data binding. One-way, or unidirectional, two-way, event, and property binding. Now, developers could define the communication between the component and view. Also, Angular moved to TypeScript, a popular superset of JavaScript that's similar enough to be easily learned and different for all the right reasons. It has static typing, catches more mistakes before production, and the code is simply easier to read, a lifesaver for distributed teams, and TypeScript is compiled back to JavaScript. Switching to TypeScript also brought mobile development closer to Angular developers. TypeScript is also used in NativeScript, a mobile framework for building cross-platform apps. This connection allows you to port up to 90% of code from your web application into mobile. More than that, Angular and NativeScript share a lot of engineering concepts like dependency injection and data binding. So learning Angular enables you to use the same coding skills for building apps. Finally, Angular's big benefit was NGRX, a state or data management tool. In component-based architecture, each component has its own state and no idea what other's state is. NGRX allows to share this information seamlessly by keeping the state in a central store, creating a single source of truth. What about the performance problems? Thanks to a new architecture and additional binding techniques, Angular 2 managed to boost the application speed, and it continues to do so by introducing more features. It made dependency injection hierarchical. Now, Angular builds a hierarchy tree, where injectors are coordinated with components, and you can apply dependencies and services to a whole subset of components. It also introduced an optional service called Angular Universal that renders the view on the server instead of a client. The problem with single-page applications is that they are initially rendered on a user's browser. While this has some benefits, it also means that the app loads slower. With Angular Universal, the server will pre-render the web app while the browser is still loading it in the background. On top of that, it provides search engine crawlers with a pre-rendered page instead of a page lacking some content. This helps with search engine optimization. Another fan favorite feature is Zone.js, a library that notifies Angular when asynchronous operations are complete, so it knows which zones and when to re-render. Before, AngularJS would simply reload the whole application. With time, Angular acquired a few useful tools to improve performance even more, like lazy loading, the technique allowing you to delay the loading of a component until it's needed. And while it grew immensely in comparison with its past self, Angular remains one of the most robust frameworks. 
In its never-ending battle with React and Vue.js that every tech blog on the planet feels the need to cover, it keeps losing to the latter's simplicity and performance. And even if comparisons seem invalid because of the different nature of those tools, the community remains dedicated to newer ones. The Cons of Angular A big part of the community is still skeptical about the upgrade, even after several years. For beginners, entering the controversial environment might be unappealing. For experts, it seems a good time to leave it. If the path to the better Angular is so laborious, maybe it makes sense to take an entirely different path. Big legacy applications decide to stay with AngularJS just because the cost of moving their whole product is unbearable. Smaller products often look at different options. Considering that Google will stop maintaining AngularJS in July 2021, you'll have to make the choice very soon. But a new large and long-term project will find Angular a perfect fit. Angular is verbose and hard to learn, but for a reason. It gives you everything out of the box for holistic front-end development, and in return, it asks for a bit more time and dedication. New versions are popping up all the time, and Google provides continuous support using it in tons of its own platforms. Besides, a good application is rarely good because of its technology. It's good because the code is good, and good technology helps developers create it.